democracy says you don't silence the people. You do not stifle the people. You don't turn off their microphones when they are speaking about the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris there showing her support for the Democratic lawmakers expelled from the Tennessee state legislature this week. Harris praised Justin Pearson and Justin Jones for their courage during her visit on Friday. The two were voted out by a Republican-controlled House of Representatives after they joined a gun control protest in the wake of a deadly shooting in Nashville. And Justin J. Pearson joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks so much for having us. Well, thanks for being here. It, it's been a few days now since uh, there was this vote to expel you and, and your colleague, Justin Jones. How are you feeling about things today? Yeah, we saw one of the most egregious abuses of power in democracy with the expulsion of myself, Representative Jones, and also the threatened expulsion and resolutions filed against Representative Gloria Johnson. We are determined to serve the people in the districts that elected us and not serve the folks who want to keep the status quo the same and not address the issues of ending gun violence that we're seeing in the state of Tennessee. And and you mentioned there uh, Gloria Johnson. She survived the, the vote for expulsion. She is a, a white woman in her 60s, and she believes that's the reason she survived. How much do you think race played into any of this, Justin? Yeah, it is impossible not to notice the obvious optics uh, and what is undergirding uh, the issue that we have in the first place in this situation. And you can hear Representative Johnson her, her own words on that and how race has played a factor. But we also need to look at why did this happen in the first place? We were told we were breaking house rules of decorum. And the reason that we got expelled was because of breaking those rules. But what we know is we were speaking up for thousands of people in our state who are asking that our legislature do something about the proliferation of weapons of war in the hands of individuals. We know that our Republican colleagues were upset that we went to the House floor and we listened to the thousands of mothers and children and teenagers, especially who were demanding that we take action on gun violence and the epidemic that we have in our communities. And so what we were talking about, in addition to who we are, impacted the decision of the Republican supermajority. And it was wrong. And people are resisting and fighting back in order that we can have actually real just laws passed in this state. Yeah, I mean, j just watching from afar, it's, it's kind of stunning to me that it's even possible to expel mm -hmm. an elected official. Uh, maybe you can uh, just give me your thoughts on that, like how that even is, is possible in this day and age. Yeah, it is extremely rare for an elected official to be expelled from anywhere, even in our state. Expulsions have only happened three times. The first were in 1866 because there were legislators who refused to ratify the 14th Amendment gra granting equal access to citizenship to everybody. The next time wouldn't be until the 1980s when a member of the House committed a crime of accepting a bribery while being an elected official. The most recent time was when an individual committed 22 counts of sexual assault. It is not normal to expel people from duly elected positions, from using their First Amendment rights in our country and rights that we all respect of the right to protest, the right to speak, and to do so peacefully in order for our points to be heard, especially when they are being ignored by the people in positions of power. It is not uh, a normal for this type of behavior and this type of retaliation and response to happen to people who were elected by the folks in their district to represent them and elevate the issues of concern for them. This is an egregious overreaction and abuse of power that is deeply concerning for anybody who cares about democracy, for anybody who cares about voting rights and voter suppression. We're in a very dangerous situation in Tennessee that can be replicated across uh, other democracies. This type of behavior we expect in some forms of government, but definitely not this one. You, you, you met with Vice President Kamala Harris on, on Friday. You've certainly received support from former President, uh, former President Obama, from current President Biden. Um, people are calling you three, the Tennessee three. H how does that mm -hmm. make you feel? And how are, I guess, how are you going to use that to push the issue here of gun control that, that got you in this position in the first place? Yes, we have to remember that there was a mass shooting at Covenant School in Nashville where three nine-year-old children were killed and three members who worked at the school were killed. We have to remember Evelyn DeKaus. We have to remember William Kinney. We have to remember Haley Scruggs, Mike Hill, uh, Catherine Coons. We have to remember all of these beloved people like Cynthia Peake who died because of gun violence. 
and because of the inaction of the legislature to do something about it and the actions of our legislature to actually make it permitless carry to lower the age for people to have guns and to have weapons. And for the Tennessee Three, for myself, I want to continue to serve in the state legislature and I'm going up for reappointment. I will run for office if I have to again in order to be able to serve so that we can make sure the voices and the names of people in our communities, like my dear friend and former classmate, Larry Thorne, who was killed by gun violence earlier this year, so that their names may not be forgotten and also that this issue may continue to have prevalence in our uh, state house and in our country. And so we're going to keep fighting and we're going to keep working to get real reforms passed that the majority of people, sensible people in the United States of America want to see happen. Justin J. Pearson, thank you so much for making the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and let's keep going.